Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal, and I'm joined by Gabrielle Menete. Hope I said the right writer and director of Freaks vs. the Reich, which is coming out tomorrow at select theaters and on uh, video on demand. Very cool to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So for people not aware yet, can you give them an idea of what Freaks vs. the Reich is about? Well, it's a movie about freaks <laughs> that uh, versus the Reich, yeah, versus the Reich. You know, it's <laughs> 1943 in Rome, um, Rome, Italy, and um, they just performed in a small circus, and uh, they got some abilities there. Nothing special, but some abilities, and, and they are thrown into the war uh, because there's bombardments and uh, bombs around and everything, and they just. You know, they are there with their uniqueness of freakness and, uh, and, um, and um, they don't know where to go. They don't have a house. So they think they might, you know, escape from Italy because, you know, Nazis are there and say, let's go to America. Let's, let's, like, let's like buy some documents and, and just free ourselves going and, and restart our lives over there. But, um, you know, everything goes wrong and uh, they need to face uh what is there you know they need to face freaks out is basically we use this this uh in italy it's called freaks out because you know you have the uh, uh it freaks out means you know going crazy but also the freaks out of the circus you know that they, they go out and they are naked in in in, in the world so they, they try to understand what to do and they make so many stupid choices because they're like little children because they're all orphans basically or they have they, they were, you know, left by their by their parents, and they just fell in the wrong place, which is the German circus. We had a German circus in 1942 in the north of Italy, and actually, those guys, the Circus Krone, was where Hitler did his first speeches when he was, you know, becoming what he became. And uh, so we took an hint there to create this story, and we create this villain, Franz, uh, that owns this. Uh, uh, crazy um, Nazi circus, and he has a guy. He's a freak too because he has six fingers in Channing to play music of the future. And I don't know what can I say. You know, you mesh all these things together, you see what's what, what happens. I mean, to me, creating a Nazi and creating a freak, it's it's an interesting conflict. And to put it on our soil, where all the, all those things happen, and play with fantasy. I don't know. Yeah, could well, I work. Think Oh, the beginning's great. It really kind of gets uh, the idea of the movie because you see the freaks and outwardly, you know, they're weird looking. But then you get, you get the music and it's like it's real pleasant and you're feeling nice. And then you cut immediately to like the ugliness of war and, uh, you know, and, and the Nazis are considered they wanted the blue eyes and the, and the blonde hair. But yet they're like the actually ugly inside. And so you have the contrast of the freaks and, you know, the uh, the ugliness of actually human beings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, to me, a freak is, you know, I'm a director and I need to shape, you know, you can do whatever you want. I remember, you know, when, when, when you, when you want to express what is inside of uh, a character, yeah, you can do whatever you want. You can use voiceovers and stuff. You can, you know, have characters fighting each other, but, you know, you got to shape visually what you mean. And I think, uh, no, a freak is unique in his physical form. And, uh, you know, the Nazi thinking that he, he, he belongs to a supreme race. The race for me doesn't exist. It's a word that should be banned from the dictionary because <laughs> what is a race? I mean, you know, there's only cultures over there. But but thinking it like that, it doesn't mean a shit. So when, when, when you put all those things together, you create an interesting conflict. And what I love about this movie is that, you know, uh, the little girl, uh, Matilde, that, you know, she can touch, can't touch people because she has current going through her and she might, you know, even endanger this, this people. She has something inside that might be her freakness. So it's like what we have, what we are inside, you know, when we come out, I mean, you should watch the, I'm not, I think we're talking to, to listeners in the radio. How is it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, I hope they watch the movie. I mean, but, you know, when you, when you, when you, when you, she says at the beginning of the movie, I'm the worst freak of everybody. I'm the real monster, not the other ones. You know, if, if, 
it might be like this, you know, when, when you want to, you know, vomit your identity uh, in front of, of other people, you know, it might be fucking dangerous and being scared, but that's what you got to do because you got to free yourself. And maybe by doing that, you might shine and be very, very, very strong. When you talk about putting all these different ideas together, so you get you have the freaks and you have, you know, obviously real events, real uh, historic, awful events. Was it hard to find like the right vibe for the movie? Because you don't want to go too comedic with things, but there's a whimsical element to it. You know, I'm I'm Roman, so uh come from my culture is very crazy. I mean, we laugh about tragedies, but we cry while we laugh. You know, I remember like the stories that I always been told, but I've seen it a bunch of times, but my grandma that she lost her child in a car accident and she was like crying like hell and during the funeral and then she was looking at her sister's shoes and said what the fuck what this shoe sucks so much and she will start start you know laughing and then she goes back to the crying with all this craziness it's really part of our culture i mean we sit some tragedy and we laugh about those things and so all these crazy tones in the movie has really represent you know i think what i lived in my family and and I think even the Roman culture there. But yeah, I think Freaks Out or the Freak versus the Right, this is the American title. Uh, it's, it's you know, it's, it, it, as, as all this multi-tone that work around and I try to find an harmony there. But if you try to keep it and you want it only one tone, the movie's going to slip you from the end and you just, just go, the, the, not going to make any sense about it. Yeah. So yeah, I don't want to, it's not going to be, there's, 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 you know, you laugh about it, not even, you smile about things. Sometimes it's funny, but then it's brutal. Then it's childish. Then it's horror. I graduated in cinema by, you know, writing a thesis on how the zombies changed in the American cinema after 9-11. So it's, you know, this is me, you know. I try to take it seriously because what you see, the deportation of the Jews, that will happen in the 16th of, of, of October in Rome. I live like 800 meters from there. All my family, we, not, not me, I wasn't there, but all, all, all my grandfathers and everybody, they witnessed that moment. So, so we, we, we really, you know, that, that is real. But then... It's me talking about something that I haven't lived, I've heard and studied. So that's why I wanted to, you know, put in my virus there of fantasy and, and tell you, it's me talking, you know. You know, if you haven't lived those things, you can't really be precise, man. I mean, I'm from, I'm from Italy and we have documents of the past in cinema. Rome Open City, nine, 1945. Those movies were shot with people that lived those things and and were shot by people that fought during those wars. So you can't beat that. That is what we have. Maybe it's a point of view, but that's it's what we have. So to me, when you go back to those times, you got to tell your truth. But to me, it makes sense more playing with your fantasy. And it's going to be your truth, your way of seeing things. And um, so that's how it works. Well, uh, we talked about it's like a part of your culture. Uh, so how did the movie play when you were doing festivals and you're playing it, uh, you know, in different countries for different audiences? Oh, I haven't, I didn't go because I got kids and, uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, I just went to Venice Festival. It really good. You know, the old guys or the old critics, some were a little bit, uh, um, you know, they, you know, they see two or three things. And then if you go out of those, they were a little bit, you know, um, severe in their critic, but all the young guys, all the young writers and everything, they were enthusiastic. They loved it over here. I mean, Freaks, uh, Freaks versus the Rack in Italy was a uh, hit in the theater. It's still one of the movies that was most seen in the theater after the pandemic. Oh, wow. So uh, that's very beautiful. And it was invited to many festivals around the world. It was sold in all the world. So that's for us was it's it's really beautiful you know because it it means ah they understand us even outside from Italy because that's that is important then usually the movie wins the audience of the uh the pop how do you say uh the, the, the prize of the audience you know yeah. usually wins that the audience yeah. likes it yeah uh you mentioned the new name and the, and the original name uh what are your thoughts on on the american uh title and uh, the poster art 
Uh, I haven't seen the poster. I just happen to know the title right now. <laughs> so, so I think freaks out is I don't know. I think maybe I mean the distributor knows things better than the right, right. director. So it just I just marry what they said. Versus first versus the right is is interesting. I mean it's uh, it's it's daring and uh, maybe it makes more sense. Freaks out. Maybe it's too mindy as a um, as a title. You know the double meaning. And uh, but physics versus reality just throws you immediately. You know, you guys, you Americans are very good because you have the ability to just name the things and be very simple. We Italians, we have a language that's more complicated, so we go sometimes in our heads. Sure. I'm half Italian, but uh, Amer- Italian descent. But uh, ah, nice. <laughs> We're from where? I'm not really sure, actually. Uh, um, my the Italian side's Luna Day. I'm not really sure where they're from, to be honest. Okay. I will look into that for, for next time I talk to you. So uh, it's a very epic movie, huge, a uh, lot of like, it looks great, honestly. It's a great looking movie. I really liked it. So how about like finding the sets or not sets necessary, but locations? Well, you know, those are all real locations when things happen. So it was very easy for me. You know, Rome is such a beautiful city. So, uh, but like uh, the square where, where of the deportation, we couldn't shoot there. You know, that's the Roman ghetto and uh, it's kind of hard, very expensive. And so we rebuilt that place. And all the other sets are real. I mean, being able to shoot in the Roman forums, it was a dream to me. Uh, and, you know, you can't close the Roman forums because I don't know how many people go a day. I think, I think more than 10,000 a day. It's one of the, it's the second most sites most visited in the world. So... Uh, I, you know, I'm wrong. I, I, I talked to the, to, to, to the guys of, um, we call it superintendents. I don't know, the mayor's office and everything. And they said, okay, Gabriel, for you, yeah, we can do it. But you got to shoot an hour and a half uh, if you want to shoot in the day. When the, when the, when the sun, you know, uh, how do you say, that comes up. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, that's it. And uh, so I had an hour and a half to shoot that scene in the Roman Farms and in eight. A, a point of, of camera and was, was crazy. It was crazy, but I had, I dare people to shoot. That's uh, nobody has Roman forum scene in day. I do, so that's 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 cool. Yeah, definitely. Now, uh, casting the movie it was uh, uh, had you worked with a lot of the cast before, or, or you know, how, how did you go about finding the right people? Uh, you know, I've been an actor for fifteen years, so I'm very precise. Uh, on who do I want? I I try to to search the right souls. Then you know sometimes you think that good actors, great actors, can do everything. No, that's not true. You should you need to find the right actor for that role, even if it's not very good as an actor, but maybe it's perfect for that role. So so I I, I did my best to work with with the right actors, and it took me like a year. Of casting, it took a lot even to produce the movie, you know, to find to finance it. So, uh, was hard part was to find the girl. You know, she's uh, Aurora Giovinazzo, the girl that, that plays Matilde, which is the main character. We can say she's only 15, 16. She turned sixteen while while we were sh- we were shooting. We shot one hundred and twenty eight days. So it took me a lot to find her, but. Um, you know, when I met this girl that, you know, she was having an argument in, in, in a scene with the guy that was giving her the lines and he, he went very close to her and she just uh, pushed him so hard. And he's like me, I'm six foot one. And he fell on the ground and said, I, I like you. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I also want to mention the score because I think the score is is great. Um, and it was funny. I, I, che- I did cheat and look it up. Cause I was like, I think this is creep w- when, when the, uh, Nazis playing on the piano and I was like, cause I, I, you know, I graduated in 94. So that's like a big song to me. And so I, I cheated and looked it up to make sure And I was like, oh yeah, it is. That's the, uh, that's a, I don't know. It's a weird touch, but it really works for the movie. And I it think, was-, was there a theremin also in some of the scores sometimes, which, uh, you don't hear too often. What, what do you mean? What do you mean, sir? A theremin, it's like that weird fifties instrument they used to do in some old um, sci- well, sci-fi. Well, the theremin is is used in the in the fifties a lot for aliens and everything. But to me, 
uh, you know, it was invented in 1900. So uh, it was perfect for Matilde because the theremin it works by electricity, and you don't have to touch the instrument like you don't have to touch Matilde. Okay, yeah. So, so it really, it really works. I mean, it's yeah, that's, it's very that's unique. A, it really added a lot. I thought. Yeah, every character has as its own their own instrument. I'm a, I'm a composer too, so I compose the music of the of the film, and. Uh, so I, 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 it came natural to me to think that Matilde needed to be a theremin, you know, and uh, yeah, Fulvio is more a drummer, and uh, uh, I don't know how to say that in English. The Fisarmonica for for uh, for Mario, I, I, can't, I don't know. I, you gotta look it up. I would translate this Fisarmonica, harmonica, you know, this is like the gypsy thing, and uh, you know, it's just more uh, a no, um, uh, nobody. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah. Now, had you directed a lot of like uh, action scenes and uh, and special uh, effects before? Well, no, no, I've done just a movie before, uh, before that. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a guy that studies a lot. So, so yeah, no, no, it was my first one. I mean, I did a movie before that was called They Call Me Jiggy. That the movie talks about superpowers too, and there are fight scenes and action scenes, but not nothing like freaks out. Nothing like freaks out. Yeah, this well, movie that I'm going to be shooting in two weeks, it's all about action. So let's see what happens. All right. Well, I'm, I'm interested to go back and look at your previous film because I really liked uh, Freaks vs. Reich, Freaks Out, as you like to call it. I kind of like Freaks Out myself, but uh, I would recommend it. And uh, it's a weird movie, but it's uh, it's really a beautiful movie. Uh, I dug it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, good luck with the new one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. sir. I hope to talk to you soon. Yeah, you as well. Bye-bye. Bye.